from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. We're going to be talking to you about your life and your money. It is a free call. The phone number is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Caesar starts this hour in Chicago. Hi, Caesar. How are you? I'm are, doing great. You know hey, what? That's Cesar. Is it Cesar or Caesar? Caesar. It is huh? Caesar. Like Julius Caesar. Got it. I, okay. I'm, I, I, did, I did not mess it up. Good. How can I help? <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I'm 26 years old, tuned in from Chicago. I have approximately 100000 in my savings. I have approximately 50000 in mutual funds that it's parked in a Roth IRA, Roth 401k. And I feel like I have a lot of options. There's a lot of pressure to buy. I'm thinking about buying a building. And uh, it's putting a lot of pressure on me, but it's a lot of options. I really don't know what to do at the moment. And I would like your advice about my situation. Do you have any debt? Zero debt. Zero debt. Way to go. Are you married? I am not married. Why hasn't some woman snapped you up? <laughs> I You're know, that's sharp. right. No, there's a woman. Trust me. <laughs> she, what, yeah. <laughs> Man, you're killing it. Way Very to go. good. You're killing it. Way to go. I'm proud of you. So is your, pers you. Is your personal residence paid off as well? Or are you a now, buyer yet? I am renting at the moment in Chicago, and this is my situation for renting. Mm -hmm. It's a two-bedroom. It's a $1,000 a month, and I'm splitting it with a roommate, $500 each. Wow. Stole that. So you're not in a hurry to get out of that. No, that's a deal. I know. So what? What's I assume. The deal? I assume they're not shooting down the street, are they? No, no, they're not. Actually, right. it's, they're not shooting down the street. <laughs> All right. So what exactly yeah, is your that. question? Like, what are you hoping to get from this call? Okay, there's a, a general question and specific question. I'm feeling a lot of pressure to buy my own building, a multifamily unit home, and to move into who, who that. Is, who is pressuring you? Mm-hmm. You know, that's a great question. <laughs> it is. In Chicago, it's like the thing to do, you know? like. Uh, well, among 27-year-olds, it's the thing it. to do, but that doesn't mean that's smart. Mm. You know, so, I mean, dude, you, you, you have really good instincts. You have really good skills. You are so far ahead of normal. Normal mm -hmm. sucks, is broke, has no money. I mean, you, you got some money piled up. You've done a great job. Way to go. Uh, if you want to buy a condo to live in, that's fine. But don't buy it because the society that's stupid thinks you should. Right. Okay. You okay. buy it because you got buy it because you looked at it and you said, I like these numbers. I mean, you're the guy living in a $500 rental situation in Chicago. You're that guy. Right. Score. You're the smart guy. I know, right? <laughs> you're the smart guy. Be listening to him. He's got more going on. So if you want to go buy you a condo, that's great. You got a hundred thousand dollars to put down mm -hmm. and or you need to set back an emergency fund of three to six months mm -hmm. of expenses. Um, and set back anything else you need to purchase if you're thinking about buying a car, you're thinking about buying whatever, so that you don't go into debt for the future items. But after that, the rest of that money is your down payment on a condo or whatever if you want to buy something. Mm -hmm. But but when you say buy a building, you know what I'm hearing? You've been reading real estate investment crap on Tic Tac. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> no, it's a, my grandfather owns a multifamily at home. A lot of people in my circle, you know, a lot of a lot of them, uh, the older generation, owns a multifamily unit home. So I was thinking, why don't I house hack, get a renter on the top floor, live on the first floor, and rent out the basement? That's not a bad idea, but you should do it because as you looked at it, you thought, A, that's how I want to live. Because the great news is your tenants are attached to you. The bad news is your tenants are attached to you. Exactly. They're going to be knocking on the door at 2 a.m. if they don't like something. Uh, unless you really set some real clear boundaries. It's very difficult to manage a multifamily that you live in from a boundaries mm -hmm. perspective. Uh, so if you want to do that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's nothing that says if you don't do that, that you're stupid. Because you ain't stupid, dude. 
I know that's right. People need to be listening to you instead of you listening to what they're saying. Yeah. So if you want to take, if I've you want to take, yeah, you want to take seventy five thousand bucks. What do you, what do you make? So I make approximately seventy five thousand a year through my my full time job, and I also own a business. And what does it make? Uh, I'm combining the income from both. Oh, so you make seventy five, including owning a business, not also including okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you mm -hmm. want to take seventy five thousand of the hundred, leave twenty five for an emergency fund, and you know you continue out of your monthly budget doing investing into your retirement plan at your workplace, then uh, and you want to go buy your multifamily and live on the main floor. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not a bad plan at all. But this idea that somehow, you know, I, I don't. I, here, here's here's a good rule of thumb. Okay. Whatever everyone else in America is doing, do the opposite, and you'll probably have some money. True that. Now, can I play devil's advocate here? Why? Because I'm sitting here thinking, <laughs> well, here's my thought. I'm like, okay, if he was buying a personal residence and he knows that he can afford it without, a rent without any rentals, you know, just on his own, great. But if he's buying this building mm -hmm. that's more expensive and he's depending on the rent coming in, should he not pay cash for this property? No. No, it wouldn't if, matter if, if it's your residence and you're going to take out a mortgage as long as you can pay the payments. And if you have to have the rent to pay the payments, no, that's what I want. That's what my thing with Caesar. Yeah. I want to make sure he doesn't need the rent from the other people yeah, living you, upstairs you, or downstairs. Yeah, you, don't, you don't go buy something that you can't. If, if your renters all don't pay, you can't be up a creek. Right. So he's got to you got to be able to afford this regardless if you have renters, Caesar. Yeah. That's just a little yeah, and that, thought keep there. You, That'll keep because here's when you have an empty apartment and you have to make payments, you become desperate. Mm -hmm. And when you become desperate, right after that, you get stupid. And that's when you put the wrong tenant in and you create a bigger mess than an empty apartment created. That's true. And so if you don't have to make the payments, if you don't have to have somebody to stay alive, right? You know, inside the inside the unit there, then you make better decisions on who goes in to the unit. Well, he's got his family, but I'm also thinking. Your family is also the ones that is like, hey, this month's a little tight. Give me till next month. So there's just a little there's a little stuff there that he he might need to consider before going in. Absolutely. Absolutely. But overall, do it because it's the lifestyle you want to live. I want to live on the first floor. I'm willing to do that at this phase of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to deal with tenants next door. Uh, I'm not doing this because my grandpa did it. Right. Yeah. I'm not doing this because I saw it on Tic Tac. That's, we're not doing that. And, um, you know, until we arrived on the Tic Tac scene about a month ago, <laughs> you could pretty well say that whatever was said on there was useless. Garbage. We're trying to displace it with some wisdom. So I've had a few things posted on there that did 10, 20 million views and that kind of stuff. Thank you, guys, I guess. Um, I think I should thank you. But, um, <laughs> yes, thank the people because they're making the they're making the views go. Yeah, well, I mean, we got to put something good on there to try to yeah. redeem the the platform. But yeah, but m it's it's more full of get rich quick crap than anything I've seen since Midnight Cable. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. Y'all, there's a lot you can't control when it comes to healthcare, but there is something you should check out that can help. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not insurance. It is budget-friendly, biblically-based health cost sharing. That means a community of members helping share the burden of each other's healthcare costs. They help people just like you in all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. Thank you to our audience. You're apparently telling other people that we're here. Thank you. Our numbers are going up in every format from YouTube to podcast to radio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, we know it didn't come up, come from anywhere but you because we do not spend $300 million on marketing like SoFi. Instead, we just actually help people instead of screwing them. 
and um, then you go tell other people. So thank you for that. If you're new, you're one of those new people coming around, you're trying to figure out all this lingo uh, around the Ramsey thing, where are the baby steps and uh, debt snowballs and all this stuff, you can go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the next best step in your financial journey. It's completely free to do that, and we'll walk you through. And, and what's become famous around Ramsey was because many, many years ago, decades ago, people came to me and they said, what do you do first? Do you do retirement first, or do I do kids' college first? That's very important. Do I have an emergency fund first? That's really important. I need to get rid of this stupid credit card debt. It's 22%. That's very important. Where do I start? And what we did at the time many years ago was we laid it out. And then we adjusted it a couple times in the early days. We only adjusted it in 25 years. But we laid out what to do first, what to do second. And we call them the baby steps. Because if you eat an, if you want to eat an elephant, you do it a bite at a time. So if you want to get control of your money, you do it a step at a time. Baby steps. Baby step one is you save a thousand dollars quickly, a little starter emergency fund. Once you've done that, and some of you just have that money, you just name it that just now, you've already did baby step one. You just reset that money in your mind over to the side. That's baby step one. Baby step two is you pay off all of your debt, except your home using the debt snowball. The debt snowball is where you list your debts, smallest to largest, pay minimum payments on everything but the little one. You attack the little one with a vengeance. You're not going on vacation. You're in debt. You're broke. You're not going out to eat. You're in debt. You're broke. You work all the time. You're in debt. You're broke. There's a great place to go when you're broke to work. <laughs> okay. This is what you do. And you bust your butt and it's scorched earth. No lifestyle. No nothing. You sell so much stuff the kids think they're next. You name the dog eBay and the cat Craigslist. Everything's going out the door. We're getting this mess cleaned up. We're sick and tired of being sick and tired. People that do it with that intensity get out of debt in an average of about 18 to 24 months. Now, average means that some of you have half a million dollars of student loan debt like Jade did. Took her seven years. Okay, and then average means some of you have five thousand dollars in debt and ten thousand dollars in your bank account when you heard me rant and you just went and paid it off. Now you're debt free. Took you 13 seconds. Okay, but the average is 18 to 24 months. Then when you finish that with the same level of intensity, you continue. We call this gazelle intensity, the gazelle running from the cheetah for its life. When you get out of debt, you finish baby step three with the gazelle intensity, and that's three to six months of expenses. Then we turn off the intensity, and we move from intensity to intentionality, and we do baby steps four, five, and six simultaneously. That's 15% of your income going into retirement. That's what's going to make you a baby steps millionaire in about 12 years following this plan. You're going to put money into kids' college if that's applicable, and you didn't sell them off. <laughs> <laughs> number no, no, baby step six is any other money we can find in the budget we're going to throw at the house and the average person paying off their house following these baby steps is doing it we've been doing this for 30 years is doing it in about 10 in, in about 10.2 years in our baby steps millionaires study we did of millionaires some of them had followed our stuff some of them hadn't they were doing it in about 11 years wow so but the point is there's an intensity for that first three steps to get out of debt and get your emergency fund in place. Because until you do that, you're broke. And you're walking around in a culture, strutting around like you got some money. You got no money. Shut up. You're broke. Quit acting like you're something. You're broke. And this putting on the crap has got to stop. And Jade, you've been hearing this thing in Baby Step 2 where people are struggling with motivation. Yeah, you know, I get it all the time, Dave. They go in my e in my DMs, direct message, even in our Financial Peace University class. I get the same question, which is, Jade, you, you guys did this for seven and a half to eight years. How do you stay motivated? And, you know, at first, Dave, I would kind of give like like the nice answer, like, well, you got to you got to connect to your why and and all of this. And I really got to thinking about it. And I was talking to Sam about it. And the more people ask me, it kind of frustrates me because there's got to be no other option. Y'all don't get Jade frustrated, okay? There's it's a gotta, bad idea. Y when Sam and I were getting out of debt, there was no option to not do it. it. It's a must. I have to. My life will never be what I need it to be, what it should be, what God wants it to be if I don't do this. So, so this idea that, well, maybe I'll do it and maybe I won't, that cannot exist. It's not an intellectual exercise. It's not an exercise. You've got to... It's an emotional 
visceral decision. Yes, I I must. It's got to. And, and nobody can do that for you. You know, you listen to this show or you come to a live event and, and we'll light that match for you. But you've got to like stoke your own flame. My buddy uh, Lucas did a talk about this. He said um, you could be a spark or you can be a flame and you can tell the difference by when the wind blows. Ooh. If you're a spark, the wind blows immediately you go out just like that. But if you're a flame, when the wind blows, you get you get bigger, you get more aggressive, you get larger and, and more fierce. And, and if you're talking to me and you're asking me, how can I stay more motivated? I'm sorry to tell you, you're a spark. You're just you're just a little fluttering spark and you've got to do what it takes. She just called you people names. She called you a little spark. You're just a little spark. You little wimpy spark. And the moment the wind blows, man, the minute you have to dip into your emergency fund, the minute something happens, you're ready to go, well, I don't know if I want to do it. I don't know if it's worth I it to me. I tried that Ramsey stuff. It doesn't work. What do you mean? What do you mean you don't know if it's worth it to you? Do you want to change your life or not? It's that simple. Motivate. If you're waiting to feel motivated, you will be waiting forever because that is completely mythological. Motivation is not an external substance. No, it doesn't come from out there it to comes, take you comes in. comes from in here, yeah. And, you know, one of the things, I, and I've kind of run into this over the years, me teaching it too, the same frustration. Blake uh, Thompson, our old producer, he now runs all of Ramsey Networks. Yeah. He used to do these comedy bits, and he created this comedy bit that we would play on the air called Detonol. And it was a pill you could take that would get you out of debt. If you just took this pill, you'd right. be out of debt. And that's what everybody's looking for. They're looking for a magic a pill. pill. You know, I was wandering in the uh, vitamin aisle, and I ran into my one of my pastor friends who's mm -hmm. kind of loud, and he yells down the aisle, Ramsey, there's no pill on there that's going to help you. you got to eat less. So good. <laughs> it's so true. Y'all want the magic pill that's going to magically make this easy. It ain't going to be easy. It doesn't exist. Let me tell you what easy is. Easy is when you finish. Easy is when you finish. It gets easier. But let me tell you this. I mean, there's the other side of that where people go, man, this is hard, right? It, it, Paying off well, debt's hard. To do working hard. is hard. But, you wuss, learn to do hard. But can I just say, it's also, what is also hard is not being able to afford groceries. Man, that's hard. That's hard. When yeah. you look up and you don't have the money uh, to take care of your kids, you don't have the money to spend the gas to go visit a loved one in the hospital. I'm talking about myself. That, that was hard. That's hard to stomach because that reflects back on you and you go, oh, my God, I've been an idiot with money. And it, in comparison, just saying in comparison, it's easier to sacrifice to win so that you don't have to endure those other things. You live like no one else so that later, later. you can live and give like no one else. Discip no discipline seems pleasant at the time, the Bible says, but it yields a harvest of righteousness. Yeah. Listen, you're going to pay a price. You're going to pay a price. You're either going to pay a price of mediocrity throughout the whole scope of your life, and your life's going to suck perpetually. Yeah, because the time's going to pass regardless. You're still waiting on the government to fix your life? That's humorous. And, you know, so we're, you're either going to live a life of mediocrity because you yeah. half but do stuff, or you're going to pay a price for a short period of time, and you're going to light yourself on fire and be a flame, not a spark. I love that. Right. That's a good line. I like this. And oh. a lot of you are going to look up, you know, Dave said the stats on getting through baby step two. Most people who get through baby step one through three, it's two and a half to three years. That sounds a lot like a lot when you just say it. But man, it, that is just a drop in the bucket over time. And some of you who've been kicking your student loan can down the road for three years, you could have been done and finished. Ooh. You could have been done. And let me tell I you think something. she just was shamed you. When this thing kicks back up, you are going to regret it. Start today. Yeah. Start today. So where does it come from? It comes in believing the best way to live your life is free and it's worth paying the price to get there. That'll give you the motivation. Sure will. I want to change my family tree. I want to look in my kids' eyes and have a different set of values. A godly man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Amen. Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. 
That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. So James Childs, our producer here on The Ramsey Show, has a boss. His boss is named Blake Thompson. He likes to brown nose his boss, and so he dug up the old <laughs> detonol clip during the commercial break. And um, so we'll, uh, you know, the, the detonol, if you didn't catch it, uh, is the, the only way that you can get out of debt by taking a pill. All right, here we go. <laughs> Nationally syndicated talk radio host Dave Ramsey has often said that there is no magic pill for getting out of debt. Well, sorry, Mr. Ramsey, but there is, and it's called Detanol. Detanol is a 100% all-natural drug that is guaranteed to control your spending and control your desire to overspend. One pill a day, and you will no longer feel the need to spend money you don't have. We have created this drug because we care about you. Detanol the pill that cares. Minor side effects may include fatigue, <sighs> headache, my head, nervousness, <clears throat> sore throat, <clears throat> explosive diarrhea, insomnia, I can't sleep, drowsiness, I can't stay awake, horrible nightmares, oh. gastronomical trauma, oh my, hallucinations, that rabbit just said my name, chronic halitosis, Woo. a slight cough, <clears throat> and a runny nose. Dentinol, brought to you by the Credit Card Association of America. <laughs> Credit, the easy way out. <laughs> oh wow, this that's show has good. changed a lot. I mean, that's a, that's a twenty-year-old bit. Not that, bad. It's still funny. Not bad. <laughs> I found it to be funny. He did some others that would get you canceled. Yeah, oh, that one. That one's passable though. All right, here we go. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Omar and Angela are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Hi. Doing well. Doing well. How are you? Better than we deserve. Where do you guys live? Up Nashville. the street in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, just right oh, here. Yeah. Well, welcome, neighbor. Good to have you. And how much debt have you guys paid off? We paid off $175,540.61. Phenomenal. Whoa. How long did this take? 20 months. Whoa. And your range of income during that time? During that time, it went from 158000 to 245000 Wow. Uh, in 20 months, somebody get a job? That would okay. be That would be Angela. Okay. Excellent. What do you guys do for a living? I'm an in-house attorney for a wealth management firm. Mm -hmm. And I'm a project manager for a consulting firm. Wow, both Very of you are cool. killing it. What great income. Yeah. So what kind of debt was this 176000 Oh, law school. There was some law school debt. There was Two some. Two grad schools. <laughs> Two grad schools, yeah. law school. Yeah. And a couple credit cards and a balance on a car. Okay. Wow. Very cool. All right. So tell us your story. How did you get started on this Ramsey stuff and why 20 months ago? So um, we've been married now for um, two years and uh, there will be three months actually as of mm -hmm. four days ago. Um, and this journey started actually when we got engaged um, in November of 2019. Um, little did we know how much the world would change a couple months later. But um, for me personally, nothing will um, have you take a really deep look into your life and your finances and in fact every other aspect of your life until you decide you're going to get married and so um, I took a deep dive into my finances took a strong look at sort of what I had left and um, thankfully my brother had taken FPU my dad has hosted two sessions at his church down in Florida so I was pretty familiar with you Dave and uh, what I decided to do was to take your steps on a test run with my personal finances before we got married and in about eight months I paid off about 75 percent of the debt that I wow. had before wow. we got married um, it works. It absolutely worked. Um, wow. Got on the budgeting app. You worked. 
Yeah, it absolutely yeah. worked. And so before we got married, we had a deep, you know, one of several deep financial talks and let her know that this is a, a path I really wanted us to go on. And uh, she tepidly accepted. So Tepid. Angela, how did that change? How did you... What was that journey like yeah. to get on board with that? Yeah, so it, I'm marrying a crazy man. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, we got married December fourth, twenty twenty, and that same month we started our budget. You know, of to aggressively pay off our debt. And initially, I was, you know, in a transition of my career. I was gonna make more money. So I'm like, are we really gonna like start tightening, you know, our belts? And so it was once I started seeing those balances go down. And I was like, oh, okay. We would have these like check-ins with each other. And he's like, this is how much we paid in the last couple of months. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, so that was motivating that debt snowball of just seeing the debt go away. And as our income grew, thinking about like what we could do for ourselves, for our family, for our future, you know, so just seeing that debt go down just really motivated me. So the psychology aspect of the debt snowball really does oh, work. Yeah. Oh yeah, it really does. Yeah, every month when we just checked in, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah. So you get married right off the back end of the COVID mess. Well, the beginnings of that. It depends on who you are is where the back end. <laughs> Some people are still in it, but yeah. Um, but yeah, but I mean, December after the world shut down in March, April, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, wow, what a time. And, and then in the midst of that, you're still paying off all this debt. You 75000 you knocked out, Omar. I mean, that's pretty incredible. And then you get married, and, and then it's game on, and you start to see the results, and you just turned up the heat even more. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, in some ways, COVID was a mixed blessing because I had nothing to do, so it was very easy to budget. My yep. entertainment budget was mm -hmm. a, close to zero, as a zero, close to zero as you could possibly get it. The so eating it out, a lot. The eating out thing was not a problem. There was no place to go. <laughs> not at all, yeah. not at all. Learn and to become you, a good cook. And you took advantage of the student loan pause, I'm guessing. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was the only, I mean, it was real, it was tangible, and it just made that balance just go down so much faster, and it was motivating, to say the least. Very so, cool. Say something to the people who are waiting. Say something to the folks who are like, hey, I'm taking advantage of the, you know, no payments. I can put that back in my, you know, spend it on something else. Talk to those folks for a minute. I, I want to say I'm, I'm very grateful, first and foremost, that I took advantage of that period of time because we saved thousands upon thousands in interest. And I think uh, if I did my math correctly, a lot of student loan servicers aren't collecting until October. So you have months to go. You could still make a huge dent, make a lot of progress because, um, you know, the, the nerdy law student in me, we I listened to the arguments of the Supreme Court just last week and uh it's not looking good and um I'm, I'm thankful that we made decisions that whatever happens up in washington up on those court steps doesn't really affect us yes. there you go they're not in control of my life now i Absolutely. love that so true so true good. you guys are a power couple man yeah, <laughs> i mean <laughs> no just, question i feel it through the glass it's great <laughs> all right so now your brother taught financial peace university your dad did it a couple of times at the church back in florida she so kind of knew it was hovering out there but now you've walked in it both of you Yes. And have experienced this as a married couple. Tell folks if they want to pay off $176,000 in 20 months, what is the secret to getting out of debt? Well, um, I'm sure we definitely have opinions. My personal one is you have to tell your money where to go. I still use the Every Dollar app to this day because we still have goals moving forward. And um, it's if you don't have control of your money, your money's going to take control of you. Yeah. And you have to stay focused and you can't get distracted. You know, there were so many times where we'd be like, oh, we could do this or that. Or someone has some other advice and was like, nope. This is what we're going to do until that balance is zero. We're not doing anything else. So you just have to stay focused. Don't pay attention to any of those distractions. It was sacrifice, wasn't it? Yeah. It was hard, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Was it worth it? It was so worth it. Absolutely. It was so worth it. Absolutely. Will you go back in debt? Oh, no. <laughs> never again. <laughs> no. Silly never rabbit. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Tricks are for kids. <laughs> yeah, way to go, you guys. Way to Love go. it. Y'all are you're amazing. I'm very, very proud of you. Who was your biggest cheerleaders? I bet dad and brother. Oh, yeah. They yeah. were very good. Her parents were wonderful. Yeah, um, and then we have our friends Our charlotte friends here. and jeff um they actually uh started fpu on their honeymoon apparently. way to go yeah. oh that's romantic not okay <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> cool. Well, way to go, guys. Yeah. So Very good. fun. Very fun. Hey, we've got the Live and Give Bundle for you, the uh, Baby Steps Millionaires book, which you're uh, probably there or about to be there soon. It's the way you're going with this income and this this level Heck of focus. Yeah. Excellently. Uh, Total Money Makeover book for you to give away. Financial Peace University membership for you to give away. So you can live some of it. You can give some of it. That's why we call it the Live and Give Bundle. Proud of you guys. Thank you. Well done. Thank well you. done. You're heroes. Omar and Angela, Nashville, $176,000. Paid off in 20 months, making 158 to 245. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. All right. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt, debt free. free. Yeah. $176,000. We're approaching $5 million already paid off on debt free screams, and it's still early in the year. Love That's it. for this year alone. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. A lot of you got questions about taxes. One of our listeners wrote this in. Uh, Dave, I gave a car to a family in my town, and I'm worried how that affects my taxes and their taxes. I don't want either of us to pay penalties or some crazy fees. Uh, well, good for you. Generosity. I like that. Sounds like you're living and giving like no one else. For 2022, if you give gifts worth $16,000 or less, individual to individual, you can do that without paying any taxes. The amount goes up to $17,000 in 2023. The lifetime gift limit is $12 million. That's your estate tax exemption amount. And uh, the person you gave the gift to doesn't have to pay the gift tax, but if the value is more than 16000 the gift tax on the amount above 16000 would be 18 to 40% of the gift's value. And although some gifts are tax-exempt, that's not the case here. So here's the thing. I'm going to bet good money that that car that you gave away was not over $16,000. So you got no gift tax. Don't worry about it. You don't have to file anything. They don't have to file anything. An individual can give an individual without filing a thing up to $16,000 last year. Well, I gave them 32000 Okay, well, then write a letter and have them sign it if you are married or if they are married that says you gave half a car to the wife and half a car to the husband and have them sign that that is the agreement. You're still under 16000 per individual. Moms and dads that want to give grown kids money because you've got too much money, you don't know what to do with it, you could actually give $64,000. So mom gives daughter-in-law 16 and son 16. Dad gives daughter-in-law 16 and daughter and son 16. Oh, wow. Four different checks, all 16,000. You're still under 16,000 individual to individual. And that is not married couples are not individuals. Uh, and when it comes, are there a, a couple is not a unit. It's two people in there still in, in terms of the way the tax law looks at it. So wow. best thing you can do is work with a tax pro that's up to date on the latest tax code. Head to RamseySolutions.com slash tax pro. We'll get you connected with uh, someone who's Ramsey trusted to do your taxes if you have a complicated return. And check smart tax at RamseySolutions.com if you don't have a complicated return. And we'll help you with uh, a very easy piece of software, very inexpensive to file your taxes. You got to love it. Matthew's in Columbus, Ohio. Hey, Matthew, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thanks. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up in your world? Yeah, so uh, I just switched uh, roles um, to another organization that is um, a state-run agency. And so 10% of my paycheck automatically goes to the state retirement fund. 
And then, uh, so I was wondering, if I have an option to do a 403B or a 457B, both pre-tax or Roth. Should I put the 5% in one or both of those funds? Or should I put them in just a Roth? I would just put it in. A, I would put it in an individual Roth IRA. Okay. Get a broker. Go to RamseySolutions dot com. Click on Smart Vester, and just do you an individual Roth uh, because you got okay. more control and more options than the four hundred three B. If you don't do that, do the four hundred three B. Four fifty seven is just deferred comp. That's a different okay. program. And okay. so, yeah, and the the, the ten percent is mandatory. I take it in your state. Yes. Do you have any control it's on what it's invested in? Um, I can do, so there's three options on that side. I can do an alternative where I can put them into, I can put them into the funds that I want per se. I mean, they still have selected funds, uh, or a traditional pension or a deferred contribution, which I think I also get to select from a, a variety of funds. A, you pick A, not B or C. You pick the mutual funds. Okay. And what you're looking for, we suggest you spread it across four types. Yeah, growth, growth and in income, aggressive growth, and international is what you're looking for. 25% into each one. Now, when are you okay. vested in the estate? When do you have that as your own, that you own it? If you left, you could roll it? If I, if I go to A, I, it's automatic. And if they match. Uh, they give us a um, – it's supposed to be a 14% match if I went with B or C. But because of the agreement with the state retirement fund company, um, I get only like 11 percent. So it's, you know, it's 10 plus 11 that would be added to my uh, fund. Perfect. Do a okay. that way. That way you own it and you control it. That increases your chances of your probability of becoming wealthy far beyond some state managed crap. OK. Hey, well done, man. Very good. Good call. Good question. Thank you for joining us. Open phones at 888 825 Tom's in Toledo. Hey, Tom, what's up? How you doing, sir? Better than we deserve. How can we help? Very good. Hey, uh, I'm 60, almost 61 years old. I've been working all my life. My wife and I, we are debt-free except our house. Way to go. Um, have been that way for quite a while. Uh, whatever God gives us, we try to be good stewards. But my question is this. I uh, retired in 09. I've been double dipping. I, I went back to work for the state. I've got about, uh, um, it looks like it's going to be about $250,000 come to uh, maturity when I turn 65, a money market account uh, because uh, of the state retirement. Um, I owe about 150000 on our house. Uh, we want to get it paid down to about 110 before I retire in 65. What would I do with that 250? Would I pay off the house, or what, what? What would you suggest? Aside from that money market account, what's your net worth right now? Uh, we've got, uh, I've got about sixty, uh, ninety thousand dollars in a reserve fund um, and then we've got our emergency fund of four months we've got a slush fund a god fund a utility fund so i, I would say right now uh we we would be at uh and then uh, like course, in your retirement funds probably at 300 to three hundred fifty thousand. okay how much is in the slush fund the slush fund is um Right now, six thousand dollars. We have about sixteen hundred dollars of discretionary funds monthly. Um, we're, that's why I said we're going to be putting five to a thousand dollars extra a month against the house. Yeah. When do you? Uh, um, what What is the the money? Is it truly a money market account? You don't have it invested what, in mutual what, funds. Well, that's what they call it. That's what Opiers calls it. Since I retired once already, I can't have a second retirement with them. So all I know. The Can money, you not have it invested better than a money market account? Because a money market account is paying you 1%. Right. Yeah. No, I can't. I can't do it. I can't pull that money out. But I mean, inside, in, they don't offer other investment bar, options. All the contributions. No, at the state. It's the, still stuck the, at the state, right? Put in. It's still stuck at the Pardon state, me? right? Yes. Okay. Do they not have other options other than just a money market that you can move it to inside the state program? No. 
That's weird. We have the third comp, but that is above and beyond That's different. my contribution. The my contributions ten percent, and my employer's contributions fourteen percent. Just like the last guy we talked mm-hmm. to, yeah. And so the the but the question is, usually they have more than one option that you can have it parked in. And to say it only has to be in money market is highly That's unusual. Crazy. Like yeah. I think you're wrong. It's that unusual. Okay. I want you to see if you can get that invested better into some good mutual funds. Poke around, see if they have other options while it sits there. Because you got five more years, right? Right, right. Okay, let's do that. And then let's take a bunch of that 90000 and a bunch of your great income, and let's pay off your house in about a year. Yeah. Okay. Like sixty one. let us have it paid for. You throw that big ninety thousand dollar account that's sitting there at it. You only owe one hundred and fifty. That's sixty grand. You got a slush fund. Mm-hmm. You, you scratch together some of the nickels out of the couch. You start throwing your income out of your uh, budget at it, and let's get that thing knocked out. One percent on a money mark. He could have put it in a high yield savings account and done better well, than that. They, they don't have. I mean, it's stuck in a retirement yeah, program. Yeah, that doesn't. And even... some retirement programs Oof. they run are dumber than a rock. That's I mean, you horrible. just never know. You never know. So I don't know what they got. I don't know what the deal is. So yeah. get in there. But it's, it, even the stupid ones have more than one option usually. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'd, I'd look at it. I really would. And, and I, But let's just try to take that 90 and pay off the house. Yeah. That's the thing. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You call, we'll talk about your life and your money. Justin's with us in Colorado Springs. Hey, Justin, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Hey, Jade, my two favorite hosts. How are you? Better than we deserve. How can we help? Yes, uh, I'm sure you guys don't remember me, but uh, I called in about a month ago, and I thought it was going to be a bad YouTube segment. Didn't end up being too bad. Oh, yeah. I think I remember. Um, Tell me more. Yeah. So uh, we uh, we had the only debt we had was a you know a truck, and um, I was had some questions about investing long term. And you guys laid out a really good plan for me, and I'm kind of here just to give you a little update. Cool. Let, let's what happened? Hear it. Yeah. So I didn't follow your plan to a T, and hence why I'm calling. And so we uh, we had a third, and we had about I thought we had about a thirty thousand dollar. Uh, truck loan, we actually had about 37, but you guys recommended we pull it from our savings and pay it off. Mm -hmm. And we didn't pay it off that day, but we did pay it off on in three weeks. So 37,000 in three weeks. So I wanted to let you know, it was a very successful call. We followed you guys' tips and now we are officially debt free. And, uh, yes. And with that, um, I did quick math on it at the 650 monthly contributions we were doing, um, on our truck and insurance, um, on a rate of return of 10% average after 20 years, that's 500,000 and 30 years, that's over 1 million. Wonderful. Um, yeah. So in my question today, and I, once again, I hope you guys take it easy on me with this. We did free up the cash and we did max out the 15% of our, uh, 401ks and okay. we do have an extra good chunk of money going to the house. And do you now, have your, uh, three to oh, six months emergency fund? We do. Yes. Okay. And college kids, and the last show that, uh, Dave, you recommended I follow up on my 529, it is in a mutual account, and there's currently $15,000 in there. Okay, good. 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 And, um, and now my question is, we, I do have a little bit more freed up money, and I know, I'm, I know I think the answer to this. I used to dabble a little bit in the day trading. Should I play around with that or just leave it alone? You, uh, you yeah, know the answer. You know the answer to that. I mean... Okay. The, the, stud, the studies tell us 78% of the day traders lose money. Okay. So it's not as bad as buying a lottery ticket, but it's close. Okay. 
Yeah, I, uh, about years ago when I was I actually worked in the financial industry, I used to do a little trading, and I did okay. But I know the market is a little bit different today. You know, it's the, just, you know, the other study that's very interesting on day trading is this. Day traders are a lot like fishermen. They remember the days they caught stuff, and they have a mental block on the days they didn't. Okay, yeah. That's and they true. go, yeah, the fishing's pretty good over there. You usually catch something, and you really don't, but you just remember the days you caught fish, you know? And so it actually is weird. You, you, you probably didn't, but you block it out because it's like, this is fun, and I'm good at it. And no, you're really not. You suck. And so don't okay. do it, you know? And I, I don't do it, and I know a lot about it. I don't fool with it. Uh, okay. I would rather you get your house paid off, and if you want to trade in something, save up a pile of money and buy you a piece of real estate. Okay. You got a lot better chance of making some money uh, buying a piece of real estate, selling it, you know, that kind of stuff than you do with cash, no debt, than you do Mm -hmm. after your house is paid off, than you do messing around with day trading. But, um, I mean, day trading is, it's just, again, I I don't care what people do. You can do whatever you want to do. Yeah. But what I'm always looking for, for me, and I'm not going to tell you guys to do something out there that I wouldn't do personally. Yeah. I'm looking for something that has a high probability of success. And so I don't really care what your broke brother-in-law's opinion is. And so that's why I didn't buy crypto. And now I look like a freaking genius. And I didn't buy Bernie Madoff. And now I look like a freaking genius, you know? And I didn't, uh, and, you know, I don't try to make my money at the craps table in Vegas. And now I look like a freaking genius. And I don't buy lottery tickets. And now I look like a freaking genius. And so all I do is figure out whatever broke people are doing and their suggestions are, I tried to not do that. And then you look like a freaking genius, you know? And so Mm -hmm. uh, that's how this thing works. And then you find out what rich people are doing. And, you know, the number of millionaires that we studied out of 10,167 that made their million dollars or greater net worth that we studied in doing day trading, precisely zero. (laughs) About as many as made it using airline miles with their credit card. Yeah. Wealth gained hastily will dwindle. We know that. Ding, 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 ding. And my guy, you know, if you're if you're chasing after that, chances are you're trying to. Get rich quick. I mean, let's just say it like I mean, that. I mean, that's a good point. Here, here's the thing you got to remember. Okay, there's gambling. I'm making fun of it. Yeah. Okay, there's gambling, and that's real gambling. Okay, that's like we're playing cards, we're playing the roulette mm-hmm. wheel, we're playing craps. Okay, real game or betting on a sports team, whatever. That's real gambling. All right. Then there is speculating, which is where I'm trying to make a short term gain Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's usually a high gain right and then there's investing and investing is always over a long period of time investing is always the tortoise Mm -hmm. where speculating is the hare and i don't know gambling's your drunk brother-in-law i don't know whatever it is i don't know but it's um but you know you see what i'm saying tortoise the tortoise is who we find when we study wealthy people we always find tortoises yeah I'm fine with being a tortoise, you know. Anytime I've ever posted about this, you know, about your rate of return and this and that, and people are always saying, Jade, you can't get a 10% rate of return. Where can I find that? And I realize you're not, you're not long, but they're not long term thinkers because they're thinking, how can I get a 10% return this year or right now? Or this week. This week. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, that's not how it works. You've got to be invested over time. You've got to be in this thing for the long haul. It's it's a habit and a muscle that you're building over time, allowing that compound interest to grow for you. So yeah, it's you know just what, a different go, mindset. And it's it's just I'm the guy that always I wanted I always thought I was smarter than the average bear and I mm-hmm. could figure it out. Mm-hmm. And I could find a way to do the shortcut. Yeah. And my wife, every time I bring it up, something that even sounds like that, she goes, You're scheming and scamming. <laughs> You're scheming doing it again. Scamming. You're scheming and scamming. You're trying to hide the pee under a shell. Just do the smart stuff. Quit trying I to beat. Qu- quit trying to beat the system. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, I mean, that you're the ones. I, the ones that I always I love. If you read our comments, people rip, ripping on us. Yeah. It's like, well, Ramsey's advice is good if you want to be middle class. Except for those millions of millionaires that we made. But other than that, yeah. That's now, so funny. Th- because because th- this is somebody who's trying to speculate. Yeah. And get rich quick and get rich easy and. It j- best way to get rich quick is get rich slow. Well, and everybody thinks that they've come up with a new, new and improved way. Yeah. Right. There's there's is the new surefire way. Yeah. I mean, like nothing down real estate's new. It's like it's blown it's up like it's new. never happened before. Because it's on Tic Tac. That's what made it that way. I mean, it's not it's new. It's not new. I was doing nothing down real estate in 1982 before you or any of you out there were a sparkle in your mama's eye. I mean, seriously, <laughs> unbelievable. Wow. 
It's yeah. not new. There's there's just new versions of stupid. That's right. New versions. You know? <laughs> there's nothing new under the sun. Wow. Still stupid stuff. Good question, sir. Thanks for following up. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save up to 50% off everything site-wide. Visit Blinds.com today to learn more. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. With debt payments and now inflation stealing more and more of your paycheck, and we know a lot of folks out there are just um, scared. And I understand. I've been there. It's not fun. Um, but you're going to stay right where you are if you stay right where you are. Boy, that was deep. Um I mean, seriously, you shouldn't have to live with that kind of stress. You want things to change? You've got to say, I've had it. I'm not living like this anymore. I've had it. And do something new with your money. We'll show you what to do. If you want to learn how to handle money, we can show you. We've taught more people than anybody else. Ten million people have been through Financial Peace University. It's our nine-lesson course. You hear people talk about when they're doing their debt-free screams. It'll teach you how to get out of debt, become wealthy, and outrageously generous the right way, the fastest right way. It's everything you wish you'd learned about on how to handle money. So decide you're done. I'm tired of being scared, tired of being stressed. And you start Financial Peace University at RamseySolutions.com slash FPU, RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. Joey's in Boise. Hi, Joey. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for having me. Sure. What's up? So, um, fiance and I are getting married in about three months. Um, we are looking to buy a house. Uh, I currently own a house. I own a duplex. I uh, rent out one side, live in the other side. The amount that I make towards the mortgage is about $800. Um, it's two bed, one bath on my side. Uh, we're looking at having kids pretty quickly on, so she kind of wants something bigger. She doesn't want to move into my place. Uh, so we're looking for a three bed, two bath, but with the uh, housing market, what's done since uh, I bought my place, and then the uh, interest rates, our our estimated monthly note would be about thirty six hundred a month. So she's very anti debt, and anti debt even less than her. But she's really making a push for it. I I'd, I'd rather stay in my place until we have to upsize. Um, I mean, just looking for advice. What's your duplex work worth right now? Uh, about a half a million. Wow. Are you talking about selling it to do this deal? Um, I'd rather not sell it. 
Um, I'd rather not have a $3,600 payment. I know, that's right. Well, the the payment on this duplex is $2,000. No, you missed the point. And, yes, yeah. Yeah. The problem, the reason you have a $3,600 payment is you're trying to keep the duplex. She's, so you think it's a better idea to sell the duplex and, and look for... You should not buy another house unless you do. So you only have two possible decisions. One, sell the duplex and buy a house. Two, live in a duplex with an angry new wife. Who? Better to live on the corner of a roof than to be in a house with a, a nagging quarrel. woman. Yes. yes. Oh, Lord, you don't want that. Trust me. So you don't think there's merit in me trying to talk her into... Uh, to move it into here, giving that another try. She said wait, she doesn't wait, wait, want to do wait, 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 it. Wait a minute. Do you really think that's smart, really? I mean, seriously. From a relational standpoint. I mean, it's not a bad place. I get where she's coming from, though. It's not our own place. And, and that's, it, It's a bachelor pad. She's not moving in, dude. She wants a fresh start. She wants a place she with you. She wants a place that doesn't have those smells. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sell it, man. And, and you can happy always... wife, happy life. Sell your duplex, get your property, and get your property where your payment is no more than a fourth of your take-home pay, household income on a fourth of your take-home pay. 15-year fixed. 15-year fixed. No more than that. We, and if that's not 36... To get then, that then don't buy the a house. Area. Then don't buy a house. What are you... Wait a minute. Where? What are you pricing out? Because you're going to sell... The, you, what will you take home after you sell this duplex? How much equity have you got? I got about one hundred and forty thousand in equity. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. okay. What's your household income? What's your income? What's her income? Uh, our combined incomes are going to be about one hundred and thirty. Okay. And um, listen, I've been and to Boise. Good, I've been to Boise. Bad. You're looking in the wrong neighborhood. So, okay, you, you can find a house that's not the duplex and that is within your budget. You know, you're trying to set up a thing where the only thing yeah. that's smart is staying in the duplex. And I got to tell you, man, um, it's she's not going to do it. It's not it's not going to work. I mean, you know, she might do it for a short period of time, but you're going to wish she didn't mm -hmm. before it's over. Just don't do this. It's not I mean, but you're trying to make this somehow a, just a financial decision. What you got to remember is personal finance involves relationships. Personal finance involves your life, where your kids live, your dogs live, your wife lives, all this kind of stuff. I mean, it, and, and you don't get to just get a pass on math because she wants a new house. Mm -hmm. Math is still math or because you want or because you don't want a new house. And now you're trying to justify there's no houses in Boise that we can. Oh, bull crap. Seriously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, Boise's had a big bump in price. I know that because California invaded it. Sure. To, and, you know, they were running out of that state like their hair was on fire and, and <laughs> Boise was close. So um, no question about it. That happened. Right. Yeah. But the um, we know we've seen that we've seen the numbers, the you know, the, the flee from California. And so ah, and so, um, yeah, it happened. <laughs> I but, don't blame <clears throat> them, though. Yeah, don't you're, you're Joey, you, you're the rationalization is dripping all over this conversation mm -hmm. to where you try to guide the conversation the way where you want it to land and it's just not going to work here yeah okay we're not going to do that i think you guys need to have a few more conversations about what you both want and what that looks like not just not just financially but just what does our life look like and it sounds like she doesn't want to live in a duplex next to duplex neighbors and she don't want to live in his old place. That, yeah. And that's not un I, mean, let me, I don't blame I, her. Hey guys listen that's a good point okay there's a even if it's nice. Yeah. Here's what happens. I got to tell you, statistically, this would be, I'm making this number up, but I'm not going to be far off. North of 80% of the time, young dude goes and buys even a nice house, not a duplex, not yeah. something, not, not a crummy, smelly bachelor pad, not nothing. I mean, just a nice place. Okay. And then when he gets married later, he discovers he bought the wrong house. Yep. Like 80% of the time. Because he didn't have her to tell him it was the wrong house, and so it was the wrong house. And so even if it was the right house, it's now the wrong house. And so you are moving. So if you yep. buy a house, dude, out there, dudes, you're 25, you're 24, and then you meet her yep. a few months later, and you get married a year later, you're going to discover you bought the wrong house. Oh, I'm laughing because that's what happened with Sam and I. I you did it, too. He did it. He had a house with his uh, little townhouse. You bought townhouse. the wrong house, Sam.
And he did and w- was with his mom. You know, him and his oh. mom went on it together. Oh, they were doing an, a mom investment. Uh, uh, yeah. In 2008. No Whoa, longer an good investment. Timing. <laughs> and uh, well, no, I'm saying we had to sell it in 2008. <laughs> Bad timing. But I'm like, I don't want to live in this little townhouse that you bought and had girlfriends and See what bought I mean? with your mom. I don't want to live up in there. I need something fresh. I need I need a fresh house and fresh furniture. I'm the, I'm the fresh wife. <laughs> That's that. I knew it was coming. I see. Now I you mean, just, you just personified it for me. Yeah, Thank you. That's yes. perfect. That's perfect. Very well done. Yeah, Joey. Uh, you see, you know, you, you, now you got Jade going. So now <laughs> now saying. you ain't got a chance, dude. So yeah, we're all on your wife's side. <laughs> fresh. Well, we need yes. fresh. No remnants. No no remnants of the former life. Yes, I don't want to see it. Because I'm looking. I'm saying, who picked out that lamp? No, no. I don't want to know that. <laughs> I don't want to know. Oh, who bought that lamp? No, oh! I don't want to know. I don't want to know that. No. Yeah. I'm turn. So. I just turned that lamp on. I got. I got. Ooh, ooh, uh, yeah. Ooh. I got. I got the willies. I don't know who's been up in here, and I don't want to know. <laughs> 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 That's fabulous. I love uh, it. So I'm well, speaking for even his if wife. It, even if it's not that, it's just you. It's not yours. You didn't pick it. That's right. If and, everything else was okay, and it's fun to do that. I mean, let's be if honest. He's never had a date in his life. And there weren't, weren't any of that. The, That's it, true. Still, you didn't pick it. Yeah, it's fun to go out and look for a place and, and, and shop with your yeah. husband to be, your wife to be. Like, enjoy that and, and see it as something that you can do together and bring you closer together. <laughs> Learn about each other. Fresh. Oh, fresh. <laughs> Gotta love it. This is The Ramsey Show. We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well-oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people, but what we didn't have was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility because businesses thrive on timely data. And NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Jade Washaw Ramsey personality is my co-host today. When I started on the radio about 31 years ago, it was much to my surprise after about a year that we had a bunch of listeners. And then my second surprise was that people actually wanted me to say nice things about their company and they would pay me to do that called endorsements. And uh, Churchill Mortgage came on that year. Churchill Mortgage has been with me now for um, 30 years on the air. Uh, The number of times that a, a host of any kind, a, a show of any kind can say they have endorsed a single company for 31 years is almost zero. Uh, either the company goes sideways, the host goes sideways, or becomes irrelevant and gets thrown off or whatever. But I've managed to stay on, on and they've managed to keep taking care of their customers, and we've managed to keep saying go to Churchill Mortgage for 31 years. And But soon after that, we started having people come to us, and they wanted us to endorse them, and it was like and I actually took on, you know, in the early days, we were trying to make a living. And I actually took on a thing, and, and then one of my, I ran into one of my friends. He goes, hey, do you really do that? Would you really tell me to do that? And I had to go, uh, no, I just, did, I just didn't know. Mm-hmm. And 
I felt ashamed, mm. you know? Yeah. Because I had done that. And then, so we developed a rule like at, you know, 29 years ago or whatever it was around here that we don't endorse, we don't put anything on the air Oh, and we especially don't put one of our voices on it saying, go do this, uh, unless we would send our best friend there, our little sister there, our whatever, your mama there, right? And so if we, that's a smell test we use around here. And so all that to say, we're, you know, we're, we're thrilled to endorse Xander Insurance and Churchill Mortgage and thrilled to have pods moving and storage as our, uh, as our studio sponsor and to tell people to use them to move. And today we've got a new sponsor joining us on the question of the day that we do each day. The new sponsor is Neighborly, and uh, they are uh, they're the sponsor, and and they've got all kinds of different companies out there that are the Neighborly companies, like you've heard of, like Mister Rooter, or you've heard of Mister Handyman or Mister mm-hmm. Electric. We actually endorse Mister Electric individual franchisees in some markets and in, in oh, wow. individual cities that I've uh, I've voiced the ads for for a local radio station, that kind of a thing. So na- Neighborly has got a a whole bunch of different services. Uh, from Five Star Painting to Molly Made. Most people have heard of Molly Made. Oh, yeah. Um, Mosquito Joe. Uh, again, Mr. Electric, Mr. Handyman, Mr. Rooter. Mr. Rooter is a very, po- very popular, big, big brand. Mm-hmm. And they've got a bunch of these things, Precision Overhead Garage Door Service, uh, that they have as franchisees. They're mm-hmm. the franchisor. And so Neighborly is a company we've checked out. And uh, they use Smart Dollar. They use our stuff to teach their team. That's great. Uh, about money. And we feel really good about the company neighborly. We feel good about the uh, types of services that they provide. And we're honored to have them as a new endorsement here on the Ramsey Show, a new trusted member of the Ramsey Show. And they are our neighborly question of the day sponsor. Our question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. When you need to make repairs, schedule routine maintenance, or find local help for home improvement projects, Neighborly is your source for reliable home service providers in your area. Go to neighborly.com to start your search. Mm. Today's question comes from Ruth in Virginia. My debit card has fraud has had fraud two times in a two week period. It's time consuming to change all the auto payments and to get a new card. Some people say that credit cards are harder for thieves to do fraud than on a debit card. What is your experience and opinion with this? Is there any truth to that theory? Also, some people recommend using a credit card for all purchases and paying it off at the end of the month. I know that you advise against doing that method. Can you shed some light onto why this is an unwise method? Happy to. I love that you called it a theory because that's honestly what it is. I'm going to be honest with you. You asked for my opinion and my experience. I have never, ever had problems with using a debit card. And I have experienced much fraud. Um, You know, there's been plenty of times where I saw the guy, I saw the transactions from Best Buy popping up uh, on my screen as it was happening around Christmas time. And I just called the bank. And I said, someone's got my information. This is a fraud purchase, fraudulent purchase. I mean, lickety split, the money was back in my account. And you can look, and I was just talking with Dave about this. You know, I think a lot of people get hung up because if you look at some of these acts, the Electronic Funds Transfer Act, you know, and and some of these things, it'll say there's some slight differences. But at the end of the day, the actual contract on your MasterCard, right, on that, that trumps that. And it's zero liability. It's the same. If you look up MasterCard and Visa and look at the actual agreement online for it says for debit cards and credit cards. You have the exact same fraud protection. You have zero liability. Zero. Zero. Now, if your debit card in a two-week period has you had fraud two times, your credit card would have had fraud two times because right. wherever you're using that thing is being picked up somewhere. It just means somebody has your information yeah. now. And if they get your credit card information, you're going to have to change your credit card. Mm-hmm. Same thing. You're going to get the same phone call from the same bank. And they're going to say, we have activity 
that does not look like it is your normal activity, and we're going to stop all charges mm -hmm. until we verify this. You get that from debit cards. You get that from credit cards. Uh, with my bank, it's an automated thing. They call up, and I have to push one, yeah. and I have to push about three things. And I, I verify that, verify that, verify that. So, you know, I was down in Mexico, Cabo, a few weeks ago, and they're like, what are you doing in Mexico? You're right. a hillbilly. And I'm like, so they, you know, <laughs> weird charge, weird charge, weird charge. And I'm like, no, not weird charge. It was me. I'm here. And so, yeah. But that's that. It, the algorithm follow the pattern of the purchases for a debit card or a credit card mm -hmm. because here's the thing in either case credit card or debit card you are not liable for a transaction that was not yours if you have a visa or a mastercard product mm -hmm. that is their agreement with you period so in either case if best buy mm -hmm. or i don't know whatever place in taco bar mexico right, right uh is showing up that means somebody got your number and it wasn't you in this case it was me in your case it wasn't you but if they if they let that money go yeah the bank lets that money go out of your account if it's a debit card or just against your credit card they can't get it back they lose money that's right so in, in and they lose the exact same money on a credit card fraud as they lose on a debit card fraud. And so they run the same theft and fraud algorithms to track to see if you're doing. It's mm -hmm. no different. It's no different. So if you don't like having to change everything and get a new card with all your auto payments uh, with a debit card, you're going to have the exact same thing happen with your credit card. It has nothing to do with debit or credit. It has to do with where you're using the stupid thing. Right. You're running somewhere where somebody's picking the thing up. And you need to look at your somewhere you're going where somebody's got a fraud reader yep. or something, a card reader that's a, stuck in yeah. the thing. And uh, or your passwords suck. Something. Somebody's getting your information. I know some of the guys around here, they like privacy dot com because you can buy things online and you can basically use a incognito card. So they're never seeing your information. So that's an option for people who are looking. But I like the and I kind of want to address, Dave, the, the second part of this question, which is saying some people recommend and I this is again, this is the thing that everybody is doing. And since everybody's doing it, don't do it, which is I put all of my purchases for the month on my credit card. Just to make it easy, Dave, so I don't have to think about it. You know, I just go to the store, swipe it, and then at the end of the month, I can just pay it off when my check comes in. I put all my purchases on my debit card and it comes out of my checking account. What's the difference? Well, one day. Oh, I just used my money. That's all. You got to oh, have a brain. Oh, at the end of the month, you're going to use your money to pay it off. Yeah. That's dumber than a rock. You just have rock. to have your brain turned on. That's absolutely dumber than a rock. You don't want to have your brain turned on. That's you want to just be able to swipe it That's and not dumb. think about it. I don't want to think about my money, and I want to have some. But yet, this magically, is oxymoronic. yet magically, you'll have just enough from your paycheck to pay it off. That Well, we know that's wrong. Let me help you with this. We know that's not the case. People who don't think about money <laughs> don't have any. That's how this works. A trillion dollars, Dave, of, of credit card debt. That's what we're at. Yeah, we're new record. New, re new, record, new record in card debt, too. And the default rate is sky high. You know what? Me and you... We got a long career ahead of us. We sure do. Stupid is still on parade job in America. We got lots of job security. <laughs> Jenny Craig and us, we got a lot of work to do. This <laughs> is The Ramsey Show. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. Thank you for joining us. Heidi is next in Phoenix. Hey, Heidi, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, it's so good to talk to you guys. You too. What's up? Uh, my husband and I have, we have our mortgage here in Phoenix, and then we also have a paid-for property that when we moved, we kept it and have rented it out. And as we've talked about our finances, we're just trying to decide if, 
even though we both like the idea of the rental, if hanging on to that is holding us back from, because we could sell it and pay off our home that we're living in and have no mortgage, which is the only debt that we're holding on to. Mm -hmm. But the rental does bring in 1900 a month Mm -hmm. and there's no mortgage on that property. Um, So our idea was like down the road, it's going to be a great, you know, asset to have bringing in income. We just don't want it to hold us back from progress right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your household income? Um, he's at about 130 and then I'm just do I stay at home, but I bring in sometimes up to about 10 or 12. Okay. Let me tell you what's happened. Okay. Um, this did not occur. The reason it's bugging you. Here's the reason it's bugging you. This situation did not occur as a result of an in, intentional strategy. It occurred by default. You moved mm-hmm. to Phoenix and rented out your old place. Yeah. Right. And so, and we know that's true because if you ran it in reverse, you would never do it. Meaning, let's try this. Where, where's the Where's the rental again? It's in Utah. Okay. Let, let's Salt pretend. Let's pretend we were living in Phoenix with a really nice, paid for house, and someone came up and said, "Hey, go borrow on your house and buy a rental in Utah." Mm-hmm. You would laugh at them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, but yeah. you you you, act, you you so you didn't actually do that as a strategy obviously, but that's the net result of having backed into this by default. Mm-hmm. That's why it's bothering you. And what that tells well, it, what that tells what, me is is I would sell the rental and pay off your house. Uh-huh. It bothers me because well, if I if I'm you and I have a, a mortgage in the home on the home that I'm living in and there the, there's a house mm-hmm. several states away that's debt free, somebody else is living there, I want the debt free mortgage. I want to live in the house that's debt free. That's the way I feel about it. If you were going to uh, borrow on your home to buy a rental that cash flowed nineteen hundred dollars, you would do it in your own town. Right. Yeah. And so I mean, I, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to pay off your house and I'm going to use your fabulous income and this new peace of mind that you have to say, hey, how quickly can we put aside 150, 200 grand and pay cash for a nice rental in our area? And let's begin. If we like rentals and you said you did, mm-hmm. then let's start building up a rental portfolio a little bit at a time. You know how fast you can do that without a house payment? It's really ridiculously fast with your income. I love that plan. And the peace of mind. You're you really. You, you're, you're just you're going to breathe deeper. You're going to sleep differently. I mean, it really does happen. Uh, Dr. John Deloney talks about this all the time. He quotes a famous psychologist that says, the body keeps the score. Yes. And when you carry stress, even if you don't, re- even if you don't realize you're carrying stress, you're carrying stress. Mm-hmm. You're, and, and debt is stress by definition. Uh, small debt is small stress. Big debt, 100%. big stress, right? But yep. it's still stress. And so your body is storing that. And, and what people don't realize is when you have zero debt, that releases all of that kind of stress out of your body. You literally, physically, phys- physiologically yeah. have a change. Absolutely. It's ridiculous. And so that, that's why, why we tell people, we try to make it funny and make it stick. Okay, it doesn't work in Phoenix, but we would say, you know, if you pay off your house, take off your shoes, walk out in the backyard, the grass feels different. In Phoenix, it'd be sand. But yeah, I mean, that's, you know, but <laughs> I mean, we watch act out like for the it, cactus. But we yeah. act like it doesn't matter. But one of the studies that we did on the state of personal finance did say that 50% of people have said that their finances have had a negative impact on their mental health. Yeah. And she's not got high stress here. No, she doesn't. But she's just saying, I want to be smart. Yeah. That was, it, that was her matters. statement. It matters. That's yeah. a good good statement. Very good statement, Heidi, and a good question. So that's what we would do in your case. Um, and it doesn't really matter if other people think that's smart or not. Uh, what matters is how do you feel when you're done with it? How are you going to feel when you pay off that house and breathe? Rhonda's with <laughs> us. Rhonda is in San Antonio. Hi, Rhonda. How are you? I'm great. How are you guys? Better than good. we deserve. What's up? Good. I have a question about retirement. I'm a teacher, taught for 15 years, and left the profession about five years ago. So I have three choices in how I can do this. I can wait for 11 years, which I'll be 66, and I'll get about $1,600 a month and medical. I'm eligible to purchase medical. I can take it now um, in June early and get 650 a month, or I can take out the lump sum of 59000 and roll into a Roth or some investment. Um, ding, ding, ding. So 11 years gives me medical, which I'm self-employed right now, and I'm paying for myself. 
So which one of those mathematically sounds like a good plan? Well, I, without running it, I can't tell you in detail for sure, but here's okay. what I do know. And it works okay. almost every single time I run my calculator, like 97% of the time. Okay. If you take the 59,000 and you were to invest that in good growth stock mutual funds, and the stock market has averaged 11.8% since it began, and you, let's say it didn't do that well and you only made 10% on it, you're going to end up with more than the other two options because it will grow to enough in 11 years to give you more than $1,600 a month income, and it will today provide you right around $600 a month. That's about what it would do. So it's about the same today on that. Now, here's how I know that that almost always happens. You're dealing with a pension fund, and pensions are regulated highly by the federal government. And they're, what they're allowed to invest in is very limited. And so they have to, by regulation, run these calculations at 65 or 7%, somewhere right in that range. And so the income that your lump sum is producing, and it will grow to produce will is all calculated on about seven percent if you instead invest it at 10 or 11 percent obviously you're going to be seven percent and the income that it's going to produce is going to be greater than seven percent the other thing that happens that just makes the formula completely blow up is you die right no when, when you die <laughs> the pension goes away completely Whew. right when you die and there's 60,000 or seven years from now, there's 120,000 or seven years after that, there's 240,000, which is probably what's going to happen in your mutual funds in an IRA that you transferred this lump sum to. When you die, they don't keep your money. That goes to your heirs. It's private property. So that blows so the math. So all of that but, would trump health insurance? Oh, uh, years absolutely. A qu quarter of a million insurance. dollars probably trumps health insurance, yeah. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, you're okay. going to be buying your own health insurance. whoop de doop de and, yeah. and you yeah. would not do the 650 monthly and then just invest that. Do you, no, did you? Did you <laughs> I did. You said 8%, even in a Roth. But even with the fact that. In a Roth, I wouldn't go to a Roth because a Roth is going to make this taxable. Oh, really? It's earned income. It is earned income. I can't income. roll it to a Roth? If, if you can roll it to a Roth without it being taxed, but I don't think you can. I think it's got, it has to go to an, uh, a traditional to keep it from being taxed. It has to go to an IRA. Okay. Yeah, Roth IRA. Okay, I don't know that. Yeah, click, click Ramsey Solutions, click on the SmartVestor Pro and sit down with one of them. They'll help you do the rollover, and they can advise you and tell you exactly what's going to happen. And they can even run these numbers to show you. And if it doesn't turn out the way I'm saying... Um, but it will. I would be um, shocked. Yeah. And then, yeah. I mean, because it's just the, the regulations put this together. It makes you go do it this way. So, yeah, you're, you're better off if you're alive and you're a whole lot better when you die. And 10 well, is higher. You're not better, seven. but your heirs are better. <laughs> they either get zero or if you live 14 years, it's a quarter million. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Option three for the win. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. 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 The, um, and, and, What's interesting is, she's a teacher, obviously, but 78% of the companies have done away with pensions. Pensions are almost gone. Yeah. Almost no one in the private sector offers a pension. About the only place you still find it is in the antiquated governmental hall, well, halls of stupidity. That's not shocking. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so teachers have it, you know, but you don't find, you know, going to work for a tech company, yeah. they don't offer you pensions. They don't, they don't just don't do it. It's that simple. Hope that helps you, folks. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods moving and storage studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people 
build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw Ramsey personality is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. Thank you for being with us, America. Nicole is with us in Bozeman, Montana. Hi, Nicole. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave and Jade. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So my husband and I are planning to move abroad for two years, then return back to Bozeman, Montana, and we're trying to figure out what to do with our townhouse. We purchased our townhome in April of 2020, right before things went crazy here, for $310,000. We currently owe two twenty five dollars on it and have an interest rate of 2.6%. Our monthly payment's nineteen fifty, which is right at a quarter of our take-home pay. We had a re- our realtor come to our house last week. They said that they would list it right at $500,000. Um, I called a handful of property management companies that said we could rent it for about 3000 a month. And I'm just trying to wrap my head around if we sell it, which I think is what you're going to say we should do. Um, I'm just nervous that when we come back, even like with the equity that we get from selling it, that we wouldn't be able to afford something that would put us at a 15, um, 15 year fixed rate mortgage at a quarter of our take home pay. Because of the interest rates? Um, the interest rates and even just, um, I mean, we bought it for 310 so what, um, he's saying that yeah, we No, 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 no. What you bought it for doesn't matter. What you sell it for is what matters. So if you sell it for 500 yeah. and prices don't go up, then the only difference in your payment would be a higher interest rate. The interest rate and, um, I mean, our realtor told us to expect about 12% to go to closing costs and things like that, and then... Once we pay off what we currently own, I'm assuming that if we sold it at 500, we take home about 215. Mm-hmm. Um, so if we came back and bought something at 500, that's still um, that would be a larger mortgage. It's a 12. Per, it's a 12 percent right swing max. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you're six percent realtor commission typically, and you've got other miscellaneous closing costs. So you know, 10, 12 percent swing. But that's assuming prices okay. don't go up. Okay. So really, you're only you know. Your biggest issue is if interest rates stay right now where they are, they're double what you're paying now. Correct. The payment's not double, but the interest rate's double. And you think Mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to get as much house for your money. Am I hearing that right? Um, That's my concern, yeah. Um, I mean, just like a lot of other places in the country, things here are pretty crazy. Um, I'd love to see it change. I just don't think it will. I just don't feel good about you going out of the country and having a rental, I mean, that that gives me more anxiety. Okay, so if if you, when you come back, your income will not have changed. What are you doing when you're gone for two years? Um, are you, are you on the mission field, or what are you doing? You know, we're planning to move to New Zealand. My husband's an electrician, and electricians are on the long-term job shortage list over there. So we'd be um, moving over. He'd be doing electrical work. Um, I'd be able to get a job once we get there. Um, we don't have kids or anything right now. I'm 29, so before we... So are you going to, is he going to be making a lot more? Is your income going to be up, way up while you're there? Our income will be up, but the cost of living over there is more expensive. I don't expect us to come home with, you know, like a pile of cash. um, So we're doing this, why? What it's going to cost for renting and stuff. We're doing this because we want to go to New Zealand? Even more reason to sell. Because what if you... Wait wait, 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 I want to hear the end of this. Hold on a second. Why, Why are you going? Yeah, we've been working your debt snowball plan. So we paid off our debt and we're we don't have kids like I said right now. So before we settle down to start trying for a so family, it's a break it's a break even adventure. In a country. It's yeah. a, it's an adventure for break even to get to live in New Zealand for two Correct, years to yes. have a fun time. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. And then when you come back you'll be doing back to your old jobs probably. Correct. Yes. And these are a max two year contract and then New Zealand boots you out, right? Um, the work visa is up to three years, but we're planning on two. Okay. And then we'll be, so max would be three and then we'd be put okay. it out. So if real estate prices go up some, which we're projecting when we did our real estate reality last year, uh, the stream, we projected and we shared with you guys projections and the reasons for them, uh, that we would see somewhere around a seven or an 8% increase in prices in 23 across the board in the United States. Some areas more, some areas less, but that's across the board. Uh, As of February, it's 7.8%, so we're dead on, okay? 24 is supposed to be a little less. And typically, 5 to 10% increase in prices is normal year in and year out in real estate, somewhere in that range. Obviously, we've seen craziness. Now, what we have seen 
the biggest thing you've got is not the um, for, for returning with the same income, no more money. The 12 percent, you know, the loss of some of your equity is not that big a deal. It's 40, 50 grand. That's not going to keep you from doing the deal. Uh, the biggest issue is our interest rates going to come down while you're gone to where you can get a similar price. Because right now, the, the 6% rate is going to make a bigger difference uh, in your payment mm-hmm. than, than the prices will, okay? So I'm not worried about you repurchasing for price increases. I am a little bit worried about you repurchasing on interest rates if they continue to rise or if they went down while you're gone in that two years. I don't know what's going to happen there. I have no clue, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Um, now, what were you going to ask that I was missing? I, I just wondered... Um you know, you're talking about going abroad. This is something you want to do. Uh, is there an, a chance? I mean, your your plan is to stay for two years, but if you end up really liking it and you can stay three years, I just feel like there's a lot of variables that when you're tethered to this property, um, it, it kind of keeps yeah. you tethered down. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. I'm going to New Zealand and I'm selling the house. Now, let me tell you why I did that. Because your reason for going is to live an adventure. Your reason for going is taken away from you if you are long-distance landlording from freaking New Zealand yep. to Bozeman. Okay? Some idiot will change his Har- Harley oil in your living room. Yeah. Okay? And this is what happens when you long-distance landlord, even with a property manager. And you're, you know, all of so, – so you can't have the adventure and still try to have the stability at home. It's not going to give you the adventure. We're trying to get the adventure. <laughs> yeah, you're going to so be stressed I want, I, out. The, with the adventure comes freedom and the freedom from this house. And then just deal with life when you come home. Figure out what it is. I don't know exactly what it's going to be. It could be higher prices. could be higher interest rates. Prices could come down, I, which would mean I was wrong. Interest rates could come down, which I have no idea whether that happens or not. I wouldn't be wrong because I didn't make a prediction there. But that that's the thing. So... I, I, do the adventure. If you're going to do the adventure, girl, don't do the, I'm going to have stability back home <laughs> and adventure. This is two different girls. Mm-hmm. Be the adventure girl or be the stability girl back home and don't go. That's a good point. But don't, you can't have both. Yeah. It's not going to work for you. Yep. Because it's going to, what, what you're not realizing is the stress of continued home ownership in the midst of this is not worth what the, the transact it's taking away from the adventure mm-hmm. so i kind of think what you're doing is fun i just wish you were doubling your income while you're in new zealand that would have made it super fun like the people that do stuff going to dubai for yeah, a year or something yeah. that, that's or going to the sandbox or to do whatever that's serious money there mm-hmm. but if you're gonna do it yeah but but hey maybe it'll turn out that way too. maybe i don't know but sell it if you're gonna go that's what i would do this is the ramsey show Jade Warshaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Hey, listen up. Our Smart Conference Weekend, the inaugural event for the new Ramsey Event Center, which they're putting the finishing touches on as we speak. They're out there rolling out sod right now, which costs more than gold. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. It is beautiful already. Tickets have been going fast. We've got just a handful left, a little less than 100 tickets. So if you want to come to the weekend, it's April 14th and 15th. It's going to be a uniquely Nashville weekend. Uh, We'll do the show and stuff at the brand new event center on Friday. We've got some of our good country music friends that we've gotten to know over the uh, 30 years we've lived here that are going to stop by and say howdy to you guys and play a tune for you, that kind of stuff. And then all day on Saturday, we're having uh, wonderful teachings on mental health, on career, on money, on 
every part of your relationships, every part of your life. It's going to be an incredible, incredible smart conference. All the Ramsey personalities will be on the stage. Uh, we're going to do events. We're going to do live podcasts from there. Uh, it's You're going to get their commemorative badge for the opening event. You're there for the inaugural event. This is all Nashville. Yeah, live music and the whole bit. Tickets start as low as $119, but again, there's just a few left. They're just about gone. So if you really want your tickets, you need to get them like yesterday. Jump on there. And I don't, we don't hype this stuff. We don't almost sell it out and then tell you. It's, listen, there's like, I saw the report a while ago. It comes through. I'm the CEO, okay? I get the reports on these things. There's actually 74 tickets left, okay? Mm. That's exactly how many are left. They less than 100. It is 74. That's what's left, <laughs> okay? And as I finish speaking, it's probably going down. So there you go. RamseySolutions.com slash events. RamseySolutions.com slash events. Now, if you didn't know, there's a very large, I can't even remember how many is in there now. It's probably approaching right at a million folks now mm-hmm. in the uh, Baby Steps community private facebook group not real private if there's almost a million people in there but it's a massive thing and uh we've been having some fun with this rebecca at the ramsey baby steps community made the following post and here are some of the responses she says you know you listen to dave ramsey when number one your kids know the call in phone number triple eight eight two five five two two five Look at you, off the memory. Man, I don't know. You been you were a listener for a long time before you came here. I think so, but if my kids could say it, <laughs> that might be this different. This is funny. You think of the Costco hot dog as splurging. A <laughs> dollar fifty. You might be a Dave Ramsey. I listener. love this one. Oh, and we've seen this. Your first date turns into an FPU in a nutshell. Ooh, yeah, we have seen that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I like this one. The kids one. ask if it's in the budget. Yeah, that's true. That one definitely comes I would up. love my kids to ask that. Your child repeats, debt is dumb, cash is king to everyone he knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, this one had a picture with it. Your child thinks one of the Minecraft characters on his pajamas looks like George Camel. L-O-L. You know why? Because it looks like George Camel. There you go. <laughs> I love this. You can't watch Braveheart anymore without hearing Dave's laughing in an otherwise serious moment of the film. I've like, been there. Yeah. F- f- when he yells freedom when he gets his head cut off. <laughs> you remember the end of the movie? That's it. I mean, it's like freedom. <laughs> Yeah, it's like <laughs> that's the that's what we use for the debt free scream. <laughs> yeah. It's like I don't know. Yeah, I agree with that. Love it. I love this one. You start using words like whoop de doop de. I love when you say stupid butt. That's my favorite. Yeah. Bass, that bass, dumb. bass backwards. Yeah. Plasectomy. Hoopty. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Stupid tax. Yeah, this one. You know, somebody started doing this years ago. You might be a redneck if. You yeah. might listen to too much Dave Ramsey or Ramsey Show if. Mm-hmm. Bought rice and beans is a five-course dinner. Okay, oh, there gosh. you go. Yeah. Love it. Oh, this is my favorite. Baker Street comes on at the pool while on vacation, and one of your kids yells, we paid cash, Dave. That's... I told I was telling Dave earlier, my kids like the movie Sing. And in the movie Sing, one Just of the characters car- Yeah. One of the characters is playing Baker Street on a saxophone and my, my son goes, Mama, that that's Dave Ramsey's music. It's like, yep. <laughs> Jerry, yes, it Jerry is. Rafferty might take offense to that. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Well, it's there not, it is. Not my music, but um, but yeah. That, well, you're drinking the Kool Aid. We've uh, yeah, you got you kind of got it all dialed down at that point. That's for sure. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us, America. This is your show. It's common sense for your life and your dollars and cents. Open phones at triple eight eight two five five two two five. Justin is with us in Atlanta. Hi, Justin. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you for having me. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Uh, so I kind of got a, um, a decision I'm wrestling with and I was hoping maybe, um, you know, uh, you guys could, uh, uh, you know, help, <clears throat> help me, help, help me with that. So what I got here is, um, in my work, uh, my employer, you know, um, basically gave me the option, um, for a company, uh, vehicle or a vehicle allowance and i'm just you know just trying to figure out which is you know the best for me which is the wisest decision there what do you do um so i'm in project management and estimating for a mechanical contractor how many miles a year you put on this vehicle um i've been in this role for two years and average is about sixteen thousand miles a year 
so not much. That's not much. Mm-hmm. That's below average. Okay. Or, or right around average, I guess. Something how, like that. How much is the allowance? Uh, $700 a month. Um, it is taxed. So yeah. after it gets taxed, it's like 600 net. Okay. Let's start with, let's back up two steps and give you the premise. Okay. Number one, under no circumstances do you go buy a car with car payments. Correct. Okay. That, that, if you're paying cash for the car and they're going to give you $700, we can think about it. All right. Now, uh, here's the thing. What we often don't think about is if you bought well, if you bought a car, how expensive a car would you buy? Or you have a car? I have a car, yeah. Okay, so you could just take $700. I can. Good. I mean, it's, Good. It's, it's old. It's an old car. Um, okay. But, have you yeah. got any money to buy a better car? Um, I've got about five grand outside of my emergency fund. Okay, so you could move up five grand in car, but we're not doing car payments. You got that, Justin, right? Correct. Because if you lose the job, you still got the car payments, and you don't have the dead gum seven hundred dollars anymore. Yeah, and that's so people all the time simple. take a car allowance and use that as an excuse to get a car payment. Mm-hmm. That's dumb, but that's horrible thinking. All right, so we're not doing that. But now once we get past that, then what we're doing is we're doing just a math analysis on the ownership of a vehicle. If you were putting 60,000 miles on the thing or something, I would just tell you take their car, company car. Because yeah. you cannot yeah. you cannot operate a vehicle and put 60,000 miles on it with the depreciation that's going to occur and the maintenance that's going to occur with that kind of heavy miles uh, on, on 700 bucks. You can't do it. All right. So you'd be better off to drive their car. Now, in your case, you're not putting many miles on it. And this just sounds like they're giving you some kind of a benefit because you've been doing a good job, which is nice. Right. Okay. Um, I've worked up to this. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. That's a, it's a compliment to you. So well done. Uh, Thank you. So what you've got to figure out is, is let's say you, you, your current car is worth what? Sixty five hundred bucks. Okay, so buy a twelve thousand dollar car, you pay cash for it. All right. Now, what's going to happen to that twelve thousand dollar car? And you got seven hundred dollars a month to cover it. Now, if they give you the company car, does that include insurance? I'm sure it does. It includes maintenance. I'm sure it does. Uh, does it include yeah. fuel? Yes, I would get a fuel card either way. Either way. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's a break even yeah. on the fuel. Okay. Wow. Nice offer. All right. So the question is, can we drive a $12,000 car for $700 a month in loss value? Yes, you can. Because you're not going to lose that much value. It's a $12,000 car. And so, yeah, as long as you keep the car cheap, uh, I'm taking the money. But if you're going to put a high miles on it or you're going to try to do an expensive car, then you're much better off to take their car. Because you take a $50,000 car, you're going to lose $700 a month in value just by it sitting in the driveway. So, you know, that, that that's the kind of crap you're dealing with there. So you are not got a lot of loss of value, which is your primary problem, and you've got your repairs covered. I'm probably taking the money and driving a $12,000 car if I'm you. Good question, and really? congratulations. Marshall Ramsey personality is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. John and Carolyn are with us. Hey guys, how are you? We're doing well. Welcome, welcome. Where do you live? We live in Whitehall, Wisconsin. Ah, welcome to Nashville. Long way from Wisconsin. It is. So, uh, how, how much have you paid off? We paid off one hundred and sixty. Hang on. 166,000 in uh, 29 months. Wow. Way to go. Very good. And your range of income during that time? It was 83,000 to 101. Cool. What do y'all do for a living? I work in accounting at uh, Pilgrims. Mhm. And I'm a stay-at-home mom. Very cool. Very cool. What kind of debt was your 166,000? It was our house. Hey! Woo! 
looking at weird people. All right. Way to go, weirdos. I love it. So proud of y'all. Thank What's you. this house worth? Uh, we looked on Zillow the other day. It was about 232. Nice. Awesome. How old are you guys? I'm 36. And I'm 32, and we paid it off just the day before he turned 36. All right. Well, happy birthday, right? Huh? That's pretty cool. Yeah. Man, who would have ever thought at you two at 36 years old would have paid for a house and 32 years old? Way to go. Well, we were trying to do it by his 40th birthday, but we uh, got a little, a little ahead bit. of ourselves. You got, you got, a, little, you got a little fired Man. up, did you? <laughs> tell, tell us what happened. What got you guys started on this whole idea uh, two and a half years ago? Well, uh, I bought the house. About six months before we got married. So actually, I'm in the 20% that you mentioned earlier. <laughs> uh, she let you keep the house. Yeah. I love the house. <laughs> yeah. And uh, a couple months after we got married, we were uh, we read your uh, Total Money Makeover book. Neither of us know how it got there, though. Um, it's a mystery. Indeed. Yeah, we were just looking for a book to read out loud to each other. Uh, we'd been married about eight weeks. And we were just like, hey, it'd be fun to read aloud to each other. And he's like, well, what do you want to read? And. I was like, well, pick something off our bookshelf. And he's like, how about this book? And I was like, sure. And uh, and then we were talking about it later. And I was like, where did that book even come from? We're like, one of I your, don't know. One of your parents <laughs> snuck into your it. house. I think God mm. ordained it that that book was on our bookshelf for a reason. Yeah, yeah so. we do that. We sneak in people's houses and leave them there. <laughs> yeah. And then they just discover them. Yeah. Way to go, you guys. That's yeah. cool. So you start reading Total Money Makeover and you go, what happened then in your brain? All right. Well, um, we grew up in normal families uh they had like mortgages and consumer debt and we uh then had a family over from church and they were uh talking about how they were planning to pay off their house the next year and they were like well we've had our house for like 30 years and uh paid more in interest than the house is worth so we were like we don't want to be like that yeah we had, we had just finished reading the book and after they left we just looked at each other and we're like no nope. we don't want to do that nope Nope, nope, yeah. not us. Yeah. Wow. So you read the book, it hit home, and you started making changes. Did you make any changes to your, your everyday life in order to make this happen? And if so, like, what were those changes? Because we say all the time, you know, sometimes it's not about that same intensity, but you get intentional about it, right? Mm -hmm. So what did that look like for you? Well, we adjusted. We also, we, we did adjust our... Uh, contributions a little bit we went out to eat a little bit less mm -hmm. uh watched what we were buying with like groceries and stuff like that uh i also had some uh some stock some individual stock Ooh. and I, I sold all that and threw it all at the house i okay. love that how much of the 166 was that uh, about 80 oh wow. wow okay so that jump started big time oh yes yeah. yeah so it was just a matter of let's take what we've got and reorganize it to hit our goal yeah right what yeah. must be true yeah. Indeed. Yeah. And then you take 80 grand and you just knock that out in 30 months with your incomes. And the earlier, well done. The earlier the better. So. I know, yeah. that's right. So yeah. how does it feel? Well, we haven't gotten to uh, feel the grass beneath our feet, but uh, the snow feels cold. <laughs> <It's so> cold. <laughs> <laughs> snow angels in the backyard to celebrate. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> very, very good. Very cool. Good job. Good job, guys. All right. So um, what do you tell people the key is now? Uh, accountability and budgeting. with Like sticking to your budget. Like laying out, telling every dollar where you want it to go. And then my wife here was uh, my biggest accountability partner. I did some budgeting before I uh, got married, but uh, it was, oh, I'm going to make the budget. And then I come back to it like four months later. And Yeah. So. Mm. Okay. So she, she kind of, she, she was the one that managed the system and then you all both worked the system. No, not necessarily. I, just I, I'm, the, I'm the nerd, but okay. I, she's the one who provided accountability and actually got me to actually holding each other it. accountable like, okay you know hey we want to go out to eat but we already used up our eating out budget so we're not <laughs> so, yeah yeah, so yeah you not. know just yeah we, we choose to pay off our house exactly, early instead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah instead of one more steak yeah, yeah. Right. very good yeah, i like it i like it i like it i like it congratulations thank you, guys. you thank you way thank to you. go we really appreciate Appreciate what you've done in our lives. Well, you did it. All we did is show you how. You're the heroes. And so, and you got the babies. What age are your babies? Well, we got, uh, we got Terry, who's uh, 19 months, and Harrison is four months. Wow. Right. We'll put them in the picture here to do the debt-free scream. We've got the Live and Give uh, bundle for you, and that includes the Baby Steps Millionaires book. You're on your way to that. The Total Money Makeover book. It can mysteriously appear in one of your friends' house. <laughs> and, uh, of course, Financial Peace University, a membership to that. If you hadn't done it, go ahead and do it. If not, give it away. We yeah. actually just got done uh, this past leading. Sunday. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, leading way FP, to go. Yeah, so. You're leading it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, That's you're what I'm great leaders. I mean, 36 and 32 with paid for house. You can't really argue with these people. 
I know. Minute. I have a different theory. We don't care. <laughs> yeah. yeah, listen to these folks. They know what they're doing. Yeah, it's yeah. very, very cool. But what these uh, young men don't realize, because they're not old enough to even grasp it, is that you've completely changed their family mm-hmm. tree. I mean, this is a godly man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. You have put yourself in a position to change everything. So very proud of you. I mean, if we just could multiply that couple right there all over America, we could change this wow. whole country. Wow. Pretty, pretty amazing. Well done, you guys. Very, very, very well done. All right, John and Caroline, Terry and Harrison from Wisconsin. 166000 paid off in 29 29- months making 83 to 101 count it down let's hear a debt free scream three two one we're We're debt free free. yeah oh this is how it's done boys and girls you gotta love it you gotta love it man you know when i first started teaching this stuff i was convinced that I was debt free because I was Mm -hmm. and I was convinced I would never borrow money again because I wouldn't Mm -hmm. but I'd been through hell we'd lost everything we'd been through everything and and I didn't know if I could convince anyone else to really do this idea of we're going to pay off our house and then I got a 36 year old and 32 year old in front of me and I've got this in front of me almost every day of the week these days Uh, People in their 20s and their 30s paying off their homes. Because here's what happens. Here's the thing. If you think, just take, I don't know, $2,000 a month house payment Mm -hmm. from age 32 to age 72, that's millions and millions of dollars in a mutual fund. If they just put what used to be a house payment, that's all they do. They don't do anything else. Yep. In their 60s and 70s, they're going to be multi, multi, multi millionaires. Multi, multi. And, and, and for the people listening who sometimes go, I don't want to wait till I'm in my 60s to be, be a millionaire. They're going to be a millionaire before that. Yeah. They're going to have some millions before well, that. Because they're not going to just do a house payment. Right. But my point is the power of not having a house payment mathematically. Yeah. And the power of investing the equivalent. Yeah. When Sharon and I finally paid off our house years and years and years ago, We went back and said, man, we're going to take that old house payment now and we're going to just see what that put that one amount into a mutual fund. That mutual fund became a million dollars so fast. It was scary how fast it happened. Just that one fund. That was one of our millions. You know, I mean, it's just it's blows your mind how this math works. Yes. And and. Don't just take our, I mean, yes, take our word for it, but man, like get on a calculator, get on an investment calculator, like start playing with those numbers and seeing it. I know for me, that's what I needed to do because yeah. you hear people talk about it and and there's still this piece of your brain that's like, is, but is it really possible? Yes, yeah. it is. Well, Albert Einstein said that, you know, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Those mm-hmm. who understand it, earn it. Those who don't pay it. <laughs> Good word. And that's, you know, Hello. Good word, Albert. Rich people ask how much. Poor people ask how much down, how much a month. (laughs) That's how this works. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Man, what a cool couple. Really, really cool. I'm just looking at them. Changing your life, changing your family tree. That's fun. Anyone can do it. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, what has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Paul Harvey said, in times like these, it helps to recall that there have always been times like these. (laughs) Love it. (laughs) 
<laughs> this is true. Crazy's always been on the block. All right. Jill is with us. Jill is in Spokane, Washington. Hi, Jill. How are you? Well, oh, hi, Dave. Hi, Jay. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Just had a quick question. Um, my father passed away a few months ago, and one of his brokers or financial people called me today. He had an IRA with them, and he was going over the options of either cashing it out or putting it in an inher- inherited IRA is where it has to be um, down to zero in 10 years. Correct. And wondering what you think is the best option. Do you have any debt? No. None at all? None. How much do you have in savings? Um, in Just in savings in the bank, we have about 140. Okay. What do you plan to do with that? Um, we're actually, we're both retired, so we're just kind of living on off of it right now. Okay. So sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about your dad. How old was he? Thank you. He actually was four days shy of 96. Wow. wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Um, how much is in the inherited okay. IRA? It isn't on this particular one. It isn't much. I think once it's split between my siblings, it'll be about 16,000. Okay. All right. Well, you, as he said, you have to pull it out sixteen hundred a year, and be taxed on it as you pull it out, or you just pull it out now and you're taxed on it. Um, right. What I would do has nothing to do with the math. It has to do with you guys are financially in great shape, and sixteen thousand is not making any movement whatsoever in your life, one way or the other. And right. So what I'm going to do is just to limit the hassle. I don't want to mess with it for 10 years. I'm just going to cash it out. Okay. Pay good. the taxes. Kind of just, but that has nothing to do with the math. That's just, I don't want to mess with it. Right. Just be done with it. You know, yeah. if, it if it was a million six, you know, I might fool with it because the taxes are going to be substantial, but the taxes on 16,000 is going to be three or 4,000 bucks and we're done. We don't think about it again, you know? And so mm-hmm. you take the money and go do, add it to your savings, go do with whatever you want to do with it, do something in his memory or, you know, something that he would have thought was fun. Go do that. I don't care. Whatever it is you want to do. But um, I'm just doing that on a, I try to do things just to keep things really simple these days. I have enough complexity to my life without adding little nitsy things. You know what I'm saying? No, I appreciate that. Yes. So that's yes, that probably great. the direction I'm going, but um um, but if, if I'm you, but there's no math behind that direction. It's simply the, uh, the minimalist, my friends, the minimalist, the way of living. I just don't want to deal with junk. You know, I don't want to deal with stuff. Mm. So, um, not, not like I really live a minimalist life. I don't, but, <laughs> uh, I do have more shirts than black shirts. That's all sure. they wear is black shirts, but they, uh, they're, they're friends of ours and they do a great job. We love their stuff. But the, the, the point being that simplify, 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 you know, when you can, when in doubt. Now, again, if you were broke and you needed the money That's or you didn't have any investments going, we might try to drag it out, turn it into, you know, some kind of get a little bit complicated with it might mm-hmm. be worth it. But in her world, it's not much money. I agree with that. Yeah. I would do the same thing. Good stuff. Now, here's what the new SECURE Act says. Used to be that if you inherited an IRA, some of you got one three years ago or something. Okay. You had different rules. But if someone passed away in 2020 or later, then what you're going to have is uh, Janu- uh, uh, if you inherited an IRA on or before January 1st, 2020, the new law does not apply to you. But after that, the new law says you inherit an IRA, whatever it is, it all has to come out in 10 years. So 10% a year for 10 years. It has to be emptied mm-hmm. in 10 years because the government wants their money. And there's taxes due on that when it comes out. Mm-hmm. So there, it's like the required minimum distribution that's there. It requires you to pull it out beginning now at 73. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's a formula that requires you to cash out traditional IRAs, not Roth IRAs, but traditionals. And this is all, that traditional is the only thing we're talking about here because Roth, is, there's no taxes on it anyway. You just take it out. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. But we're try, are we forced to take it out and pay the taxes now? Well, today, if it's if it's someone that passes after January 1st of 2020, Secure Act says, and this is the original Secure Act, not 2.0, but the, still, it still says 10 years. you got 10 years to do it. Hmm. Andrew is with us in Santa Barbara. Hi, Andrew. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. What's up? Hey, sir. Um, 
I just wanted to, you know, I want to be weird like you guys talk about. Um, I heard that I hear the debt-free screens all the time. Um, you know, we want to get to that point. My wife and I, um, fortunately, we don't own a house right now. Um, so that's something later down the road that we'll get to. Um, but we just started SPU a couple weeks ago. Uh, we got step one knocked out. We're in step two right now. Way to go. Um, and uh, speaking of baby steps, you know, we have a baby on the way. Um, our, our first we're expecting. Congrats. Um, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, and so we're just, you know, while we're paying that debt off, we want to make sure that we're also trying to, you know, start saving up for kids, for the kiddo, because um, kids are expensive. You know, I have a, a five-year-old from my first marriage, so I realize how expensive kids are. Mm-hmm. So I just didn't know if you guys had any advice on while we're working on baby step two, you know, how can how can we kind of start stuffing away bits and pieces here and there to, to get the kiddo started off right? Yeah. How much debt are you working to pay off? Uh, total combined. Um, I mean, we really don't have a lot, honestly. So we have the car is our biggest one. We, mm-hmm. we owe about 23 on that. Um, mm-hmm. And then about uh, 1200 bucks on a credit card. Um, so, you know, we've got maybe 24 total in debt that we got to pay off. What's yeah. your income? Um, we get about 2800 every two weeks. I- I'm on um, salary. She's on time card, so it kind of varies a little bit with her time. Uh, about 5600 a month is what we average. Okay. You know, uh, a lot of times we would say to pause the baby steps or pause the debt snowball while you're waiting for a baby to arrive. You know, we want to make sure that there's so many variables with babies arriving in this world. So we want to make sure that you've got the money yeah. to cover it. I mean, obviously you're going to be paying your deductible out of pocket, that sort of thing. And, um, you know, stack up all that money, all the money well, that the you would have. Thing... Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. So the good thing, um, the, the, uh, birth itself, so I'm in the military. So healthcare, um, We'll cover the the entire birth. Wow, great! So that we don't have to worry about paying for anything for the birth. We just wanted to, you know, start still, you know, stuffing away things for. I mean, because kids grow out of diapers. What's, you know, what's, you, know you don't need money for that. You need a budget for that. What's mm-hmm. your due date? Yeah. Uh, August 12th right now. Congratulations! This is mm-hmm. a wonderful time for y'all. Thank, thank you exciting. for your, thank you for your service. So I'm still going to do yes, what sir. Jade suggested, Andrew. There's no downside to it. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to keep working your budget with the same intensity that you were going to work it for paying off debt. The only difference is pay minimum payments on everything and pile up as big a pile of cash as you can pile up. How much do you think you can pile up between now and August 12th? 10,000 bucks? Oh, I, w- I would say at least, yeah, if we're, if we're going to keep on track. Of yeah, let's, call, let's, call, let's call it, fi- it 15,000, okay? So 15,000 okay. is piled up and baby comes. Military pays all okay. the medical expenses. There's no problems. Baby comes home. Mama comes home. No problems. Take fifteen thousand, put it on, pay off your uh, stupid little card, and uh, then put the rest of it on the car, mm-hmm. and then we'll finish up the car by Christmas. Okay, you're going to be out of debt at a, almost within a minute or two, uh, the same speed as if you just pay down the debt. Mm-hmm. But what this gives you is fifteen thousand dollars worth of breathing room with a brand new baby coming. It just in case something weird is going on. Right. And the key is don't don't cool out your intensity just because you're not making those payment, those extra payments every month. Right. Keep keep going hard at it. I push pause and pile up cash. Use the cash to catch back up right to right to where you would have been. But that gives you this breathing room because in case something happens, it's too important an event to, to have to not have margin right now. That's what we would do. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.